Well, now that you mention it, I think they still both pop okay, up. Yeah, see. they do. Here we go. This is yeah, the test. Because he drives at night. Yes! Hey, how about that? They look good. Yes. Right. <laughs> you gotta love Fast, that. too. Yeah. What's up, Gene? Let's do it. Car shops and collections. Let's get out of the way of traffic. Today, we've got a 1994 Pontiac Trans Am. It is a 25th anniversary edition, one of 2,000 that were made. We found one here in Las Vegas. We got Peter and Tina. They're the owners. They are down the street. And instead of walking, why don't we get into my car and go see this one of 2,000 Pontiac Trans Am 25th anniversary edition. It's going to be a fun one. Let's do it. So Tina, she sent me some pictures of the Trans Am. It's not in the best condition, but it's it's cool. It's one of 2,000 uh, made, so I'm excited to, to see this thing. Should be uh, around the corner. They said they were getting it cleaned up. I know their son works on it too, so we'll take a look. Oh, there it is. It looks good. They got the oh, there's that a Ford? Is that a Fairlane in the garage? This is gonna be good. That thing all cleaned up. There's Tina. Let's do it. This looks fantastic. I love it. Heck yeah, it'll do. Looks even better in person. How are you? So nice to meet you. Great to meet you. Hey, JC, hey. Peter. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. This JC, is pleasure. Gene, sir. my photographer here. Hi, Gene. How are you? All right, ready to break this thing down? For sure. Let's I'm do it. Excited to have you here. Let's do it, man. Hi, my name's Peter Gazelli. And I'm Tina Sanchez. And today we're going to invite you to take a look at our 1994 Pontiac Trans Am 25th Anniversary Edition. Thank you guys so much for having us. I'm, I'm super excited to break this thing down. I, I do want to know, how did you get your hands on a 1994 Pontiac Trans Am 25th Anniversary Edition? Fell right into it at the Meekum Auction in October 2019 here in Las Vegas. And that was your first time going to the auction? Yeah, very first time. I've watched them on TV uh -huh. for years, but I'd never physically been present at one, uh -huh. and let alone participated in one. And it was an adventure. It was so much fun. They are as chrome and glass and colors yep. galore out yep. there. Yeah. You got you you went because your son just got his driver's license and you wanted him to have yes. a special car? Yeah, so our son had gotten to be driving age. He was 17 years old uh -huh. at the time. And I told him that, you know, life isn't about things and, you know, belongings and stuff. It's about adventures and memories. And I told him, wouldn't it be great if we were able to go get you into your first car at the Las Vegas Meekum auction? When he's my age and our age, he'll be able to talk about that yes. to his own kids. Yes, absolutely. And so they, this was the one that jumped out to your son? Yes, this yeah. was the one that jumped out to him. We went down there without really a plan. Yeah. Um, we didn't know what we were looking for. And you told me you had Uber down, so you, you had to buy something. We to had home. to buy something. <laughs> we were committed. So we took an Uber down there, and uh, we were committed to be able to come home with something. And so this was one of the pieces we picked up, and I'm just super tickled by it. It's it's incredible. So it's the 25th anniversary edition, 1994. If you go back to 1969, the very first one, you get that cameo white with the blue stripes, and so that is that is the nod to the very first one. You have the white with the blue stripes going down the front of it. It is such a cool looking Trans Am. You got the white wheels down here, which are so cool. The little nods to the 25th anniversary right there, with the bird on the wheels. This is so cool, I think too the 25th anniversary Trans Am. It's so neat to see that as well. That maps up to the seats. Yeah, right here in the seats too. Yeah, let's, let's pop open the inside. What an awesome first car to be driving as well. Boy, right? I'll oh, tell you. Was, I, had, I had a Pontiac, it was a Pontiac Fiero. Oh, really? Oh, my okay. first car. <laughs> cool, it was also white too, but not as cool as this. Well, I gotta tell you, my first car was a 1980 Volkswagen Rabbit diesel. <laughs> The so, so this was quite a step up for my son's first car. Absolutely, it certain, certainly is. Come around the, uh, the, the backside too. That blue stripe goes all the way down the back end. The honeycomb taillights are so cool as well. This is, so it's, so it's one of 2000. Yeah. Um, and then you have with the T-tops, and is it a cassette or no cassette? Uh, no cassette, no. disc player. D disc player? Yeah, okay. disc player. So automatic. T-top, CD player, 700 of those were made. So you have one to 2,000 
of these were made, 700 have that combo. Right. Is that right? Yeah, so it's, technically it's one of 700 wow. of these that were made, which, which makes it, I mean, even rarer to have. Wow. I, I do have a question on the, on the front end. Sure. Because you see a, a, a lot of them, you look at the pictures online, the blue stripe comes down, and then the bird is also a solid blue. Was this replaced at one point? I'm not sure. You know, I don't think it's been repainted, uh -huh. but there is a little bit of a drip on the driver's side uh, door jam, okay. which makes me feel like it probably didn't come from the factory that way. Yeah. So it may have been repainted and redone at some point in its life. Because, yeah, because you see the striping comes down, and this is normally the solid blue as well. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, but it, it looks like it's, I mean, the lines have been perfect if you look at it, so. The, the, the history from the auction, uh -huh. we were able to come, the, the gentleman that had it, yeah. kept a book of maintenance. So that might have been pre-him. Got it, okay. Because that's not in the book. What's wild to think though, so 1994 was the 25th anniversary. And here we are now, 30 years removed 30 from years the 25th later. anniversary. Yes. It's just it's crazy. time is a trip, isn't it? It, it is. is. It is so wild. It is. Well, one of the cool things about the 94 is that's the year I moved here to Las Vegas. Is it really? And so it kind of hit a heartstring with me when we were at the auction when I saw it was a 94. You saw it? Yeah. Yeah. And this, so this is the Gen 4. This is Gen 4. Oh, it is? Yeah, of the, oh. for, the, for, the, for the Pontiac, for the Firebird. This is something that caught my eye. Can we pop the trunk yeah. here? Because this is really neat and really special. You have something that, um, that on its own is a collector's item. And Tina has right here is the, uh, why don't you open it up? The 25th anniversary Trans Am uh, book that came with all these things. There we go. There go. it is, yes you have it, yes. So uh, it comes with the pen, right? Uh huh. The pen. We've got the, For the, uh, the, the, tires. the tire gauge right there. That is so, and it did come with a calculator as well. Which must have been, been right there. there as well. But to have this with the, the white and the blue, this is, people look just to buy this. This is a collector's item right there. And then you've got the T-tops. And so this is something here, which was they first did uh, with the Gen 4 uh, Firebird, the Gen 4 Trans Am, a storage spot for your T-tops. Oh, no kidding. So you could lock them into place right here. A lot of times you get the storage bag, but this is the first time it's actually designed so you can put them, store your T-tops and it holds them into place right there. I had no idea. And then that's a, that's a neat thing. Wow, that is. You think they would have thought about that years ago. It took them to 1994 saying, hey, maybe we should put something to hold the T-tops in place. Let's take a, a, a deeper look on the inside. Does it have the, uh, is it a remote start or like a keyless entry? Uh, keyless entry. Keyless entry. Um, but not a remote start. White seats and anything are hard to keep clean. And you know, some wear and tear on the seats. But it's a 1994. Like you said, it's a dry, you guys drive it, right? Your oh, yeah. He drives it every day? Every oh, day. Oh, yeah, every day he drives it to, to and from work. I mean, it's 153,000 miles on it at this point, <laughs> And it just still runs like a top. Good for him. So yeah, it's got a little, you know, got a few bu bruises, a few scars, but you know what, JC, don't we all? It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you, I love it, you drive it, you drive the car. So inside here, we have the, the transmission performance button. What do you guys, what do you notice when you hit that? So it seems to really make it run or shift uh -huh. a lot rougher, Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. um, and so during, uh, you know, when we're driving around town, I don't put it on. Okay. But there have been a couple of times, you know, when we try to get into it around the neighborhood, yeah. we'll pop that on. on and you can definitely feel a difference. Can we see under the hood? Sure, sure, sure. And this, 1994, they started making them in January of 1994. This was the official pace car of the Daytona 500 that year in 1994. Oh, was it really? Yeah, so even something makes it even more special. So it's the Corvette uh, engine, right? The LT1? 5.7 liter LT1, yes. Wow. Uh, and it's, boy, it's they so, jammed so it in there. Back, yeah. I mean, they, they jammed they it in. Get in there, right? It's a little difficult to wrench on because uh, it's yeah. pretty tight uh, in there. Pretty tight. But yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it runs and- It's got some the, power, right? Well, this is the first uh, eight cylinder car I ever owned. Okay. You know, growing up, I was a Volkswagen, Mazda, uh -huh. Honda, Mitsubishi guy. Uh -huh. And so, you know, it took me 47 years of life to be able to get into a V8 car. And I'll tell you, it's something special. It gets up and goes. Did you, when you guys bought it at Mika, so you drove this one home? 
Uh huh. Yes. Right out of so here in Las Vegas at the convention center. Mm -hmm. center you just yep. drove it right home. Drove it right home. That is neat. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, and this looks like yeah, looks like it has not been replaced. So maybe it was just painted over that front end. Could be. And the fog, the two fog lights down front. It's a really neat look. Isn't yeah, it? it is. It is a cool look. Yeah. And it's not scraped up. A lot of these you'll find underneath. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful with those parking lot. Yeah, uh, parking lot, uh, and also pulling into. Yeah. Pulling in my driveway back home. Oh my gosh, you back out. My dad has a has a Corvette, and just you pull out. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, we try to take it an angle uh -huh. um, because even just this little bit of an incline causes some issues. Well, so now the new Corvettes, the C8. I think this thing is brilliant. So the, the, the front end on the Corvettes, well, you can actually raise it up. Oh, no kidding. Really? So you, don't, you don't scrape. And so what my dad has, now he's got the C8. And he, so first time pulling the driveway, he raised it up. The Corvette remembers GPS coordinates. Oh. So every time my dad is coming home, he slows down. It automatically, it really? starts to raise up because it knows that's a spot when based on GPS. When did they start GPS. doing that? What year? So this is, his is a 20, 21, 22. 22, I think it is. Yeah, it's wow. the latest version of the Corvette. That's wild. Well, that's it has smart. 500 like s spots where you can save it. No kidding. So you, you pull into the office, you save, so it'll automatically raise up. It won't scrape the bottom. We only had that in the 80s. That's smart. Can we go for a ride? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you guys comfy? There's plenty of room in the back seat. Are you kidding me? Uh -huh. <laughs> so also, if you lean back far enough, you have more headspace. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, selling point in 94, the three-point seatbelt in the back seat. That was a big thing in 94 to have. Is that right? And also extra credit, too. We can't turn the volume up because of the YouTube um, copyright. Yeah. But when you turned on the radio, it was on 94.1, which is the radio station we're looking for. So. Oh, excellent. Double thumbs up to you guys. How did you get into cars? Uh, you know, I just had a, a, a thing for my entire life. Just, you know, just a kid growing up. Ooh, oh. there it goes. Just had a passion for him, love cars. Uh, you know, I'm not a nuts and bolts guy, but I just, I love cars and car stories. And finally decided two years ago to, to start this show and we just had our 100th episode. Wow, yeah. congratulations. Yeah, thank you. This is comfortable back here. Yeah. <laughs> Hundred and fifty on the uh, speedometer up there. Yeah, yes. the odometer one hundred. Or I'm sorry, the speedometer one hundred and fifty. Um, the research that I've done says this car can do one hundred and fifty-three top speed. Okay. Um, which Let's seems out. outrageous <laughs> to me. <laughs> seems totally outrageous to me. Your son loves driving this thing. I take it. Oh, I think he really enjoys uh -huh. it. I think uh, you know when he was in high school, he got a lot of attention when he pulled into the lot with this car. Heck yeah. And I think too, I think this is where the trend is going. Uh, we've done, we had a 1988 Pontiac uh, Trans Am, that GTA, huge response. And then we, we did the very last ever Trans Am was a 2002 WS6, huge Ooh. response. I Ooh. think the trend when it comes to collector's cars is gonna be these 80s and 90s Trans Ams. And the fact that you have an anniversary edition, one of 2000, I, I think this is gonna become one of the uh, more desired Trans Ams to have. It's a rare thing to find. You know, I didn't realize it was so rare until after we got it home. I looked it up on the Google and uh, realized that there was only 2,000 made. Yeah, it's nuts. But you said that of this configuration, it's like one of 700. One of 700, yeah, with the T-tops automatic in the CD. Oh yeah, now we got it. Zero to 60 in about six seconds is what, uh, is what they say. I love the sound of it. It's a, yeah, it's a great sound. Go back to 1994 and look at the options that you have. The fact that you do have a CD player back in 1994, yeah, that's pretty cool. So we said what about 275 or 279 horsepower? I think? 275 horsepower. Okay. 325 foot pounds. And top speed, like I said, 153. You go back to 1969, the 1969. And that was the first year of the Trans Am yeah, Rack. Had 279 horsepower. Really? So, yeah. Wow. I don't know why you would need any more. No, yeah, it's perfect, right? Yeah. 
when you're there at Meekum and bidding, what, what's that like? Were you stressed or? It's very stressful. Is it? I mean, it's fun, but I felt very stressed just because the pace of things at uh -huh. the auction. It's very fast. It goes so quick. Yes. I mean, each car only spends maybe 90 seconds up there on the block. And so you gotta like be involved. Uh -huh. And we had bid on a few vehicles. We went on Thursday for the Thursday cars because that's what we could afford. Yeah. Um, and uh, we bid on probably a half a dozen different vehicles and kept getting outbid and kept getting outbid. And uh, our son was starting to lose interest a little bit, get a little discouraged. Yeah. Um, so when the station wagon went across the block, I pulled the trigger on that. And I probably shouldn't have. Uh, <laughs> I like how, yeah, you, you went there to get one, all of a sudden there's now two in the garage. We went to get him a car, and I ended up with one, too. <laughs> what, but that, is, that is a, like you said, that's what I love about this. What a great story um, that your son has with his first car. Well, I hope someday that he'll be able to sit at the bar with his kids or with his buddies and be able to say, you know what, I remember getting my first car, a Pontiac Trans Am, at the Meekum Auction in Vegas with my folks. Yep. I, and I'll never forget that day. And I think he has intent to keep this car for his lifetime. Yes. And, um, you know, I have the memory of being able to pick up the station wagon at the same auction. So I'll never get rid of that either. Uh, just really neat adventure. Uh, Tina, if you're, your father's Volkswagen that you're looking to have oh, restored. Okay. So any Volkswagen experts out there or, or know people in Las Vegas that work on Volkswagens, we've got one that Tina wants to get restored for her father. Um, it's right now kind of in a field area when you see the picture. Um, so if yes. anyone has information on Volkswagens, let us know and we'll let Tina know. Cool options too on the steering wheel, the radio controls. Mm -hmm. I mean, today, you know, so like, oh, it's very common. 1994, that, that's new. And that you have the lumbar seats too, right? Yes. Yeah. And like you said, for 1994, I mean, this car was like a space shuttle. It really is, I yeah. I mean, it was really decked out. Even just the look of it too, it's the um, that fourth gen of the, the Firebird is that rounder body style. See, I had thought it was a third gen. No, so yeah, gen one was six, gen one was only around for like two years. Okay. And then you had gen two, which was the run in the 70s, which, you know, they get into the uh, the Bandit and oh, Smokey okay. the Bandit. Oh, okay, okay. Gen three started in 82. So gen three went 82 to 92. And then gen four started in 93 to oh, 2002. Oh, so that red one on your video series, uh, the 1988 Trans Am, that was a Gen 3? It's a Gen 3, yes. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, the GTA, yeah. Gotcha. Well, I would be uh, I would be remiss if we didn't look at the ferry lane really fast. Oh, we'll do sure. A quick once over and yeah, take yeah, a look yeah. at it? Yeah, for sure. And, oh, headlights too, they work? They both yes. pop up? Yep. Oh, yeah. Well, now that you mention it, I think they still both pop okay, up. Let's yeah, see. they do. Here we go. This is the <laughs> test. Because he drives at night. Yes. Hey, how about that? They look good, yes. All right. <laughs> you gotta love Fast that. Fast, too. <laughs> you gotta love that. I saw the picture of this. Looks, lo looks awesome, great condition. Why did you, this goes across the block at Meekum, and what jumped out to you to? So I had my eye on, uh, it was a 1979 Chevy Malibu Classic wagon. Uh -huh. And that was the wagon that I grew up with, with my parents. Okay. And we did a, an entire cross country trip when I was a kid with my sister. <sighs> that we drove that Malibu Classic from Kansas City out to the West Coast, up the West Coast, across yeah. all the way to the East Coast, down and back to Kansas City. We spent an entire summer in that, in that station wagon. Oh, I love it. So I got outbid on the uh, Malibu Classic, um, and then this one came across the block. And I didn't realize at the time, there was a reason they were pushing it across the block. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's a 1964 Ford Fairlane 500 custom ranch wagon. Also a relatively rare car, which I didn't realize. Uh -huh. um, but they only made this intermediate size of the Fairlane wagon in 63 and 64. Okay. And so there were only two years of this kind of models. And uh, very difficult to get parts from. But when it came across the block, it was all rattle can matte black. Uh, rusted down and all of the uh, really? bottom. Yeah, it was in pretty poor shape. It looks great now. This is all you're doing? Put now? a lot of time and it, energy and into now? it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's fuel injected. Oh yeah. Um, so it runs like a top now. It looks great. 
And uh, what's nice about the fuel injection is even with these old cars, it just fires right up. Is the radio in the back here? Uh, that is a DVD player okay. and radio. And so in the uh, uh, bottom there are four marine batteries and they got a little trickle charge to be able to pull and uh, charge them up. Uh -huh. And then you put a TV in the back of it at the car meet and be able to pop a DVD in there and watch like American Graffiti at That's the car great. meet. <laughs> you guys do a lot of car shows? Bing starting to get into yeah. it. And Pete's starting to now that he's got the car back. Yeah. I like those custom gauges you have down there. The vintage air inside that? Yeah, yeah. vintage air I put in, uh, fuel injection. Fuel sender, new ignition, uh, paint and body, uh, brakes on, uh, disc brakes on the front. Okay. When we were coming home from the auction, they were following in that car, and uh, they thought I was drunk because every time I'd hit the brakes, <laughs> it would just veer to the left. <laughs> and yeah, so too much fun at the auction. <laughs> the uh, the uh, mechanic had said, "Pete, you're lucky you made it home. You were running on the left front brake, no and that was kidding. it." Yeah. So uh, it was kind of a funny story. I, I, they pushed it across the block because they couldn't get it started. So I couldn't get it started when we were trying to get it out of the convention yeah. center. And they had these guys in the golf carts driving around going, y'all gotta go, get your cars and get out of here. And I said, it won't start. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the guys helped me jiggle around with the key on the ignition and oh, we got it to fire up. And yeah. that at least got me home. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of energy and a lot of time, a lot of time in the shop to be able to get it to where it is. It's, it sounds it sounds great. That is ah, cool. Thanks. Yeah, it's a it lot of fun. Smells good too. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Pulls a lot of attention. Yeah. Oh yeah. But it takes me back to my childhood, and that's why I ended up, you know, pulling the trigger on this, is because I have those memories of my folks and my sister yes. doing the cross country trip in the station wagon. That's what I love. That's why I love doing the show. Is stories like that. It's it's, so fun. And the, like the story behind you guys buying the. Uh, the Trans Am for your son. Well, Peter, thank you so appreciate much it. for thank doing you this. Very I appreciate it. Tina, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank and you. I know we'll be in touch again for the Volkswagen. Yes. And spot one, spot two, there's something else that you guys have over here, right, that your son drives every day. We'll save that for another episode. Okay. But good. there is a third car. We have to come back and see at one point. But thank you both so much. We appreciate thank it. You. Thank, thank, you. thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. If you want your car, shop, or collection featured on the show, then shoot us an email at carsshopsandcollections at gmail.com. That's carsshopsandcollections at gmail.com. And thanks for watching, and be sure and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes of Cars, Shops, and Collections.